Hello everyone, it's Melinda and today we're going to be looking at my collection of fairy stones. Um, different types of fairy stones. Uh, and of course the term fairy stone is simply a nickname or a metaphysical name. It's certainly not a geological term. Um, <clears throat> the true geological term for these rocks would be storolite. Uh, this mineral here, storolite. Chiastolite sometimes referred to as andalusite, but we'll get into that, um, and these beautiful, interesting, unique concretions. Um, yeah, so uh, even though they share very similar nicknames, they are not related geologically, um, but I thought it would be neat to include them all in one video because these are you know, unfortunately, because of the very, very similar nicknames, uh, they're often confused for each other, um, and there's so much, you know, uh, online arguments and bickering going on about what the true nickname is for either of these. Um, <clears throat> and I think, uh, you know, it's all a little... I love nicknames, and I think they're so fun, and they add a, you know, like a unique flair to stones. I'm not against them, but I don't think it's worth fighting over it. I think the true, you know, glory of these gorgeous stones, uh, or rocks rather, um, you know, comes from their story, comes from the geology of how they were created. So let's get into that. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with my Storolite specimen, which is typically nicknamed Fairy Cross. And you could probably guess why by looking at it. <laughs> um, this one was recently acquired, and I've been looking for one for a while. Um, I wanted one that showed that perfect cross, that twinning look. Um, so when I saw this one, I snatched it up. <laughs> and now it is one of my very favorites. Alright, so storlight is a mineral that is commonly found in metamorphic rocks such as schist and gneiss. Nice. And you can tell from the sparkles coming off on my fingers that this one is probably uh, a mica schist. Uh, it forms when shale is strongly altered by regional metamorphism. It is often found in association with almondine garnet, muscovite, and kyanite. So muscovite is a very pale colored mica. So this could uh, very well be storlight in a muscovite schist. Um, <clears throat> the reason it is found uh, often with almondine garnet, muscovite, and kyanite is because these minerals are formed under similar temperature and pressure conditions. Um, let's give a little tour of this guy so we can see the whole formation. <laughs> So storolite is a silicate mineral that is usually brown or black in color with a resinous to vitreous luster. It ranges from transparent to opaque. And I would say my specimen is kind of like a reddish dark brown uh, and it's certainly opaque. It doesn't appear to have any translucency at all. Um, starlight is usually easy to identify when it occurs as visible grains in a metamorphic rock. Uh, grains of storolite are typically larger than the grains of other minerals in the rock, and they often exhibit an obvious crystal structure. They occur as six-sided crystals, often with penetration twins, and that's what uh, we see here. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> so the name storolite is from the Greek word storos, which means cross. Um, the mineral commonly occurs, as I just said, uh, twinned, two crystals grown together, uh, six-sided crystals that sometimes intersect at 90 degrees. However, it is far more common to see the intersection at an angle of 60 degrees rather than a perfect cross right down the middle they tend to be more on an angle like this. And sometimes when I come across some interesting, you know, history of the myths and legends, I like to share that. So in this case, uh, in Brittany, storolite was said to have fallen from the sky. In North America, the legend says that storolite stones were the tears of the Cherokee tribe of Native North Americans 
who in the 1800s were following the Trail of Tears to reservations after they were forced to leave their ancestral lands. But the most widely known legend says that Storlight was formed from the tears of the fairies shed when they heard the news of Christ's death. The fairies' tears crystallized to form the shape of a cross. I find the latter the more, um, <clears throat> which is apparently the more, you know, common myth associated with this stone to be totally perplexing. I've <laughs> read the Old and New Testament. I studied it um, uh, for my education. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't remember talk of fairies. Uh, I just, I don't know. I feel like fairies are more associated with pagan religions. So I find it really, really interesting that the fairies shed tears for Jesus. I mean, he's certainly deserving of tears, but I just think it's a really interesting um, mashup of, I don't know, religions in that little tale. <laughs> if anyone has a little bit of more insight into that, I'd love to know more about it. I find that fascinating. All right. So next up, we'll look at my Chiastolite Fairy Cross Stone. These are so cool too. There we go. And like I said, sometimes these are labeled as andalusite. Andalusite is a rock forming mineral that is mined for use in high temperature refractories. Uh, gem quality specimens are cut into faceted gems and cabochons. Chiastolite, however, is a variety of andalusite. So it is certainly andalusite, um, but it's a specific type. Um, and in this case, uh, in the case of chiastolite, it contains black particles of graphite. So what we're seeing here is actually inclusions of graphite. The graphite is arranged in geometric patterns, typically as we can see here. Uh, the graphite is pushed aside by crystal growth within a rock that is being metamorphosed. As growth occurs, the particles become concentrated at crystal inter interfaces. Um, the result can be a cross-shaped pattern within the mineral. And that's why these are often nicknamed fairy cross stone or sometimes just cross stone. So people have known about these cross stones for centuries and have valued them for their uh, perceived religious or spiritual meaning, uh, very much like storolite. Um, attractive specimens are often cut and polished for uh, use as amulets, charms, and novelty gems. Neato. So these two beauties here, oh my goodness, I know they're not, you know, a big cluster of sparkling crystals or anything, um, you know, that might wow anyone. Um, these are still so fascinating to me. The shapes um, are just so neat. So this was the first one that I purchased. I actually purchased it in Glastonbury in the UK, um, and these are labeled fairy stone um, and it said it was from Canada and as I'm Canadian I just thought oh well then I must you know I must get one of these uh, <laughs> it's just too neat that I'm buying a Canadian uh, rock in the UK um, it's like Mickey Mouse <laughs> um, yeah so I was just excited to add one to my new collection I was just a new collector at that time um, but I still found it was just so fascinating and I often wondered how this was created. So, <clears throat> as I got more into the geology side of collecting, uh, I found out that these are concretions. Uh, and a concretion is a hard, compact mass of matter formed by the precipitation of mineral cement within the spaces between particles and is found in sedimentary rock or soil. Concretions are often ovoid, uh, it's like, you know, flat circular like pancakes, <laughs> or spherical in shape, 
Um, although irregular shapes also occur. And the word concretion is derived from the Latin con, meaning together, and crescere, or sorry, crescere, perhaps, um, meaning to grow. Very, very cool. Ah, the sounds of the city. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. So descriptions dating from the 18th century attest to the fact that concretions have long been regarded as geological curiosities. Because of the var variety of unusual shapes, sizes, and compositions, concretions have been interpreted to be dinosaur eggs, animal and plant fossils called pseudofossils, extraterrestrial ter debris, or human artifacts. Um, yeah, so because uh, concretions in general are, you know, oddly shaped, these smooth, spherical-looking rocks, um, they're often, uh, you know, confused for mm, possibly more interesting and rare things, although I happen to think they're very interesting, just as they are. <laughs> uh. All right, and this one I got recently. I absolutely love it. It's not only lighter in color than the other one, it's much lighter uh, in weight as well. Uh, this one was labeled as a calcite fairy stone uh, from Quebec, Canada. Isn't it a beauty? It's much more uh, intricate than my other one. I just think they're so neat. Oh, I love them. Um, so... Let's get into the specifics of these so-called fairy stones. Um, they're technically calcium carbonate disc concretions uh, that consist of single or multiple discs, usually 6 to 10 centimeters in diameter and often with concentric grooves on their surfaces. They form in quaternary clay as calcium carbonate migrates to some small fossil or pebble. Fairy stones are particularly common in the Harikana River Valley in the Abitibi Temiskaming uh, Administrative Region of Quebec. So, Quebec is very much uh, a typical location for these types of rocks. Um, however, there's also a location in Ostergotland County in Sweden as well. But both of mine are Canadian fairy stones. Uh, the fairy stones of northern Canada were discovered by the Algonquin tribe when they came upon Canada's second longest river during a hunting expedition. Looking strangely like biscuits, they named the river Herikana, which means river of the biscuits, in the Algonquin language. Uh, the stones soon adopted the name fairy stones as they proved over and over to be lucky charms. <laughs> and really, when you look at them... You can kind of understand fairy cross, fairy cross stone, uh, but when you look at these, you kind of wonder, like, why fairy stone? Um, so apparently that is attributed to their, their luckiness. <laughs> I don't know. You'll often see uh, some concretions labeled as goddess stones, um, and they typically do look like beautiful robust uh, women with nice rolls, that typical shape of the, you know, beautiful goddess. Um, but these ones don't necessarily line up in that same way. I like the term fairy stone. <laughs> goddess stone too, but hey, fairies are fun. <laughs> All right, everyone, there are my fairy stones. Um, I hope you found that Whimsical and interesting. I sure did. <laughs> uh, thanks again for stopping by, guys. See you next time.